the average of n, 2n, 3n, 4n, and 5n is 18. What is the value of n? Add them all and then divide by how many there are. And in this case, there are five numbers. And that is equal to 18. So that's how you figure out the average, right? So the top is what? Uh, 3, 6, uh, 10, 15n. And then when you cross multiply the 5 with the 18, you get 90. And then divide through by 15, and you will get 6. Part B, suppose that 2x plus y is 5, and x plus 2y is 7. What is the average of x and y? 2x plus y is 5, and x plus 2y is 7. So I'm just going to add them. So this is going to be 3x plus 3y is 12. Divide through by 3, and you get x plus y is 4. And then we want the average of x and y. So basically what we want is x plus y divided by 2. So just divide both sides by 2, and you will get the answer, which in this case is 2. The average of t squared, 2t, and 3 is 9. If t is less than 0, zero determine the value of t. Okay, so t squared plus 2t plus 3, the average, so we've got to divide by 3, since there's 3 of those terms, is 9. Okay, so let's, uh, I guess this is the algebra, and regardless of what the outcome is, we have to choose the value of t that's less than 0, so that makes me think that there's two values, because this is most likely a quad quadratic. Multiplying through, we get that is equal to 27. Put everything on one side, t squared plus 2t minus 24 is 0. And I'm pretty sure this factors very nicely. t, t, uh, 6 and 4 plus minus. Yeah. So that means t is either minus 6 or 4. But since t is less than 0, the value that we want is t equals minus 6. If Q5 is the midpoint of the line segment with endpoints 1P and R5, what is the values of P and R? So the midpoint formula for these two points, or for any two points, as you know, is you add the x-coordinates and you divide by 2. And then you add the y-coordinates and you divide by 2. And they've already told me that that midpoint is 5, 3. So this is equal to 5. And this is equal to 3. So that's it. That's the math. And this will be pretty straightforward. 1 plus r is 10. So r is 9. And on this side, p plus 5 would be 6. And therefore, p is equal to 1. r is 9, p is 1. A line with slope 3 and another line with slope negative 1 intersect at 3, 6. What is the distance between the x-intercepts of these two lines? OK, so. For the millionth time, we have to figure out the equations of lines. So the first one, y equals mx plus b. As always, the slope they're saying is 3, so that's 3x plus b. And then uh, this is a point on that line because th it's an intersection point. So we'll sub that in to figure out b. So that means when x is 3, y is 6. So this looks like b would be minus 3. So therefore, the equation would be 3x minus 3. Okay, So that's the first equation. Second equation is when the slope is negative 1. So same story. This will be negative 1x plus, uh, let's just put capital B because it might be a different value. I don't know. And then again, substitute this value. So that's going to be 6 is minus 3 plus b. And b, the big b, this time is 9. So this equation is minus x plus 9, right? So now we want the x-intercepts. You get the x-intercepts by setting y to 0. So set y to 0 here, and you get x equal to 1. And when you set y equal to 0 here, you get x equal to 9. So they want the distance between 1 and 9, and I believe that would be 8. Moving right along, we have part C. For some value of t, the line with the equation y is equal to tx plus t is perpendicular to 
the line with the equation y equals 2x plus 7 determine the point of intersection of these two lines. We have y is equal to tx plus t. And we have y is equal to 2x plus 7. Now, they're saying that these two lines are perpendicular. If that is the case, then their slopes will be negative reciprocals. So if you multiply their slopes together, it would equal negative 1. That's what negative reciprocals do. So that means t is basically equal to negative 1 half. So we can easily figure t out. So this equation is y is equal to negative 1 half x minus a half. All right, so what, uh, what do we have to figure out in this question? The point of intersection. Okay. So I guess the point of intersection, you would set these two equal to each other. So minus 1 half x minus 1 half is equal to 2x plus 7. And then multiply through the whole thing by 2. So that gives me minus x minus 1 would be 4x plus 14. And then let's uh, solve this algebra. So that's going to be 5x is minus 15, I believe. So x would be minus 3. And then sub x equals minus 3 into either of these to get the y value. And when you do, you will get 1, I believe. So that point of intersection is minus 3 and 1. The positive divisors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. What, are the, what is the sum of the positive divisors of 64? Well, first, let's list the positive divisors of 64. I believe it's 1, 2, 4... 8, 16, 32, and 64. And then the sum, of course, add these guys all up. And when you do, you should get 127. Fion wrote four consecutive integers on a whiteboard. Lexi came along and erased one of the integers. Fion noticed that the sum of the remaining integers was 847. What integer did Lexi erase? Okay. Uh, we have a little bit of trial and error here because we have four consecutive integers, n, n plus 1, n plus 2, and n plus 3. Now, we don't know which one she erased. So we've got to go through some trial and error and um, because we have to figure out which one of these. So I'll give you, I'll, I'll, let's just at random say that this is the one she erased. So that means the other ones are the ones she chose or the ones that's remaining on the board. And um, that sum is 847. Okay, if I read the question correctly. Yeah, the sum of the remaining integers was 847. Okay, so this would be 3n plus 3 is 847. So 3n would be 844. And therefore n would be 281. Okay. Well, not exactly 281, 281.3. Okay, that's a problem because these are integers. So since n is not an integer, this uh, assumption was incorrect. Okay, so I got to keep going here. Okay, not a problem. Um, let's, let's decide to remove this guy. So we're going to keep uh, n, n plus 1, and n plus 3, okay? And that is 847. So when you do this math, it's 3n plus 4 is 80, 847. And then therefore, 3n is 843. And therefore, n, uh, let's see here. This one is 281, right? And this time we get an integer. So that's good. That means this assumption was correct. So if n is 281, then this guy was 281, this was 282, this was 283, and this was 284. So the one we removed, what integer did Lexi erase, was the 283. And that's the answer to the question. N, arithmetic sequence with seven terms has the first term d squared and a common difference of a d. Uh, the sum of the s seven terms in the sequence is 756. Determine all possible values of d. 
Okay, so the first term is d squared, and then the next term would be d squared plus d, and then you'd have d squared plus 2d, and then d squared plus 3d, and so on. So they want us the sum of the seven terms in the sequence. Uh, are they saying the first seven terms? I'm assuming so. So 4d, d squared plus 5d, and then the seventh, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The seventh term would be d squared plus 60. Okay, so we have to add these all up. So if you add them all up, I believe we get 7d squared plus 21d. And they're saying that sum is 756. Okay, so that's the algebra. Divide through by 7, and you get d squared plus 3d is 108. Put everything on one side. d squared plus 3d minus 108 is a 0. And then let's see if this factors. Because as always, you don't want to use a quadratic, right? So I think this factors very nicely, 12 and 9 and plus and minus. So therefore, d is either minus 12 or 9. And those are the possible values of d. Liang and Edmundo paint at home, but at constant rates. Liang can paint a room in three hours if she works alone. Edmundo can paint the same room in four hours if she, he works alone. Liang works alone for two hours and then stops. Edmundo finishes painting the room. How many minutes will Edmundo need to finish painting the room? Okay. Well, Liang, uh, three hours to paint the room. Okay. So in two hours, I guess she would paint two-thirds of the room, right? That's sort of, I guess that's just straightforward. I hope that's straightforward for you. And then Edmundo, he's taking four hours to paint the room. Now, the question actually, we have to read it carefully. She, Ed, Liang works alone two hours, and then she stops. Okay, Edmundo finishes painting the room. Okay, so Edmundo is getting one-third of the room to to finish because Liang has already finished two-thirds of the room now he finishes the room in four hours normally so to finish only one-third of the room he would need four divided by three hours now four divided by three hours they want it in terms of minutes that's one hour and a third of an hour so that's 80 minutes so that's one hour plus a third of an hour so that's one hour and 20 minutes which is a total of 80 minutes. On January 1st, 2021, an investment had a value of $400. From January 1 to 20, 2021 to January 1, 2022, the value of the investment increased by 8% from its value on January 1st, 2021 for some A greater than zero. From January 1, 2022 to January 1, 2023, the value of the investment decreased by 8% from its value in January 1st, 2022. On January 1, 2023, the value of the investment was $391. Determine all possible values of A. Okay, before I get into the A's, let me just give you a number example. It might be a little bit clearer. Otherwise, it might, if I go into A's, it might seem a bit abstract. Okay, so let's say A was 10%. Okay, and we started with $400. Now, initially, we have to go up by 8%. Now, 10% of $400, even if you don't know what it is, we can put it in. 10% uh, converted to a number is 0 0.1 of $400. So that would be the math. And this would be 400 plus 40, which is $440. So that is what it becomes. And then... They're saying it decreased by 8%. So we take that 440 now, and then instead of adding, we subtract 8%. 8% of 440. Now my A is 10%, so that 10 converted to a number is 0.1. So this is the math now. So 440, uh, 0 0.1 of 440, I believe, is $44. So that is 396. Okay, so that is an example using numbers. Now, we are not given any value for A, so I've got to do this now on this side for 
just A, and we got to get to 391. We came pretty close here, just with my example, but let's see what happens. Now, I'm going to follow the exact thing that I did over here, so hopefully it won't be confusing. We started with 400, and we have to now take A over 100, because we have to convert it to a number. It's currently given as a percentage, and we multiply by 400. Okay, and that is this guy when you, we do the calculation. And then we bring it here. And then we have to subtract from this whole thing this guy, which would be, again, A over 100, which is this 0 0.1, and then this 440. Now, this 440 is this whole thing. So i got to put that whole thing over here, 400 plus A over 100 times 400. Okay, so it's not that bad. I mean, I, I know it might seem a bit abstract, but hopefully, since you have already seen uh, this example, this over here should make sense. And this whole thing, we want to take equal 391. So, 391. Okay, now let's do the math. So we got 400, and this looks like uh, 4a, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And then we have minus A over 100. And then this looks like 400, again, plus 4A. And that equals 391. Okay, so this is going to stay 400 plus 4A. And then this will be minus 4A. And this will be minus 0.04A squared. This is 391. And then these cancel. So, and then the minus 0 0.04 I put on the other side, bring the 391 over, and that becomes 9. And then divide through by 0 0.04, and you'll get 225 is a squared. And then finally, take the square root to get a is equal to 15. And I believe that's the only uh, possible value of a.